Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and today we're going to be talking about how to fix frozen RV systems, water systems. So if your pipes are frozen or your holding tanks are frozen up, I'm going to go ahead and walk through a few things that you're going to need to do in order to remedy that problem and hopefully escape without any damage to your pipes or lines. Now, for those of you, this is kind of an in-depth video where I'm going to cover a lot of the steps that I went through because this actually happened to me while I was out of town. The temperature dropped, we got an unexpected freeze here in Colorado. And I have water in my fresh water tank and all of my lines. So my cold water and my hot water lines were all full and pressurized up from a trip that we just went on. And so that can be disastrous. Uh, for those of you that just kind of want the short abridged version, basically you open up all the cabinets and drawers and uh, access to your water pump everywhere that you can. And you're going to want to heat that RV up for about 12 hours. I mean, you just got to thaw the lines. Uh, one big tip that I'll mention right off the bat is do not try turning on your water pump if you suspect that your lines are frozen. The ice can puncture the diaphragm causing damage to the water pump and then you're going to have to either get a, re get a uh, repair kit or replace the water pump altogether. So don't do that if you suspect that they're frozen. And um, then you got to warm everything up and that's it's, just, it's all there is to it. You can turn on the heater, you can use space heaters, but you got to thaw those lines before you can use the water pump and drain your system and prepare it for winterization. That's the short version. Now we're gonna get into all the details of how exactly I'm gonna go about that. This happened to me, like I said, and so I got in there and after thawing everything out, I was able to, to escape without any damage to my pipes or my water pump. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to accomplish all of that right now. So as you can see, we're gonna go ahead and check the inside temperature right now, 46 degrees. Uh, because it's right in the middle of the day so it warmed up but last night it was definitely freezing okay so now that we're in here we're going to check our lp gas good we have half a tank we're going to need that because we're going to warm up the rv especially if you have frozen pipes if not you're going to need to get some possibly extend uh connect an external propane tank to your uh heater or use electric heaters now the water pump we do not want to use don't don't turn that on uh, just to check things out because if your pipes are frozen, the ice could damage the diaphragm in the pump and then you're at a $100 water pump. So do not turn on the water pump yet. Now, our holding tanks are empty, which is good, both of them. If they are full, I will tell you how to remedy that problem as well. But for right now, we're going to check our fresh water, half full. So that's disastrous. We didn't, you know, freezing conditions, we didn't drain our fresh water tank. And there's water in all of the pipes. So we're going to work on fixing that right now. So what we're going to want to do first here is locate your water tank and your water pump so we can kind of check out the area and see what's going on. For me, that's underneath this couch right here. So we're going to pull off all of these pillows and take a look. For me, my water tank located in here. So we're going to take this, just kind of place it over the side here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take off the cover, that way we have access to the water tank and it can be heated when we crank up the heat. If your water tank isn't accessible like this one and maybe it's located on the bottom or something like that, I will go over some procedures on how you can heat a tank that's underneath the RV. On the opposite side, is where my hot water pump is. So we're going to take this off and take a look in here. And there you can see the water heater and the water pump. Now a good way to tell if your water pipes are really frozen and you know you have fresh water in the tank and in the lines would be to pull the uh, plugs on your low point drains to see if water starts flowing out. If it does, you might have dodged a bullet and maybe your pipes aren't frozen. And uh, if nothing comes out, then there's a good chance they're frozen solid and we're going to have to go on from there. The drain, the low point drains can be found. I'll show a little clip here in just a second. Once you've located those, that's going to be a good indication of where your low point drain plugs are. For me, they're right here. They're these little guys, little pins, and you pull them up. And then you check outside to see if water's coming out. Your low point drains can be located just by looking underneath to see if you can find two little pipes that are coming down. And as you can see, once we pulled those, we do have water draining out, which is good. That means at least uh, this area is not completely frozen and uh, we can kind of drain the water. 
If you pull your drain plug and you have barely any water coming out or no water at all, that means the pipes are frozen and we're going to have to thaw everything out. Okay, so we know we're suspect we have frozen pipes and we've exposed the water tank, the fresh water tank, the water heater, water pump area. Now you're going to also want to open up any cabinets where you have plumbing. So you're going to want to prop all these cabinets open underneath your sink. And also you're going to have pipes that are going to run to every little last bit of your RV. As you can see right here by the inverter, uh, those are the water pipes that are going to go back to the kitchen area. So we're going to leave all these cabinets open. Open up all your drawers and cabinets, including under your bathroom sink and anywhere else that you can uh, get to that has plumbing, pipes, wiring, your toilet area, everything, we're going to open all that up. Now that we have all the uh, doors and windows closed, all the cabinets opened up, everything that involves water is as exposed as possible, where you're going to crank on the heat. And you're going to want to heat this guy up for about six to eight hours, if at all possible. If you have really frozen lines, this is what you're going to want to do is just get everything warmed up before we turn on the water pump. Like I was saying, if you have a little space heater, you might want to put that in your uh, little area with your water pump, making sure that you're not going to burn anything from the hot air coming out of the heater. But uh, this is just a little $20 space heater. I'll put a link to uh, down below if you need one. But you want to make sure that water pump is nice and warm and that there's no ice inside the water pump. Otherwise, when you turn it on, it could damage the diaphragm and you're going to have to replace your water pump or get a rebuild kit. And that's no fun. So now that we've got the heater in the RV cranked up to about 80 degrees, 75, somewhere in there. And we have a space heater going on. All the cabinets are open in the RV. We're going to let this guy warm up for a few hours. Uh, it's going to vary depending on the type of RV you have and how accessible all your pipes are, but you're going to want to get everything nice and toasty. You may even need to do this for 8, 12 hours. Get everything nice and hot. Okay, so now that we've warmed it up in here, I gave it about 6 hours at about 75, 80 degrees in here with all of my cabinets open. Your times are going to vary. If you're, if you're sure everything's frozen solid, then you're really going to have to give this a day or two. The longer that you keep everything heated up, the better your chances are for success. Okay, so now what we're going to do to test everything is I've got my drain plugs closed now. And I do have water still in my fresh water tank. Okay, I want to do that because now we want to check for leaks now that everything's thawed out. I want to make sure that everything's good for the winterizing process. So, close your drain plugs. Now we're going to turn on the water pump and keep our fingers crossed and hope that everything's okay. All right, so let's keep our fingers crossed. Now we're going to hit the water pump. And I can hear the water pump running. And all right, we have water. That's a good sign. So far, so good. So you're going to run, want to run your hot water as, as well until all the air bubbles are out. You're also going to want to go ahead and run water to all of your other faucets to make sure that all the air is out of the lines. Hot and cold. Shower, toilet, sinks, everything. Get all the air out of there and make sure that water is running from both hot and cold. Now that we know that we have water out of every faucet and everything, all the air is out of the lines, we can hear the water pump going. Let me get down here so you can hear that. Now I'm gonna turn off the water. The water pump's gonna stop. And we are gonna sit here and wait and listen to see if it cycles at all. Because if it turns on even a little bit, we know we might have a leak somewhere. But if we sit here for maybe 15, 20 minutes and we never hear that guy cycle, that means we have a good pressurized system with no leaks and we survived without any water breaks. So now we just play the waiting game and listen to that pump. So it's been 20 minutes and I haven't heard a single peep out of this water pump, which is fantastic news. That means that our entire water system is pressurized and there are no small leaks. Otherwise we would have heard it cycle or chirp or do anything like that that would have indicated a loss of pressure and that it kicked on. It has not, so that means we survived the freeze and all of our pipes are fine, all of our uh, faucets are fine, the toilet's fine, everything is okay, so that's great news. If you did hear this little water pump cycle during any of this process, 
That means that you have a small leak somewhere and you're going to have to track it down. Check the toilet to make sure it's not slowly filling with water. Check the faucets. Check um, everywhere you possibly can. And if you don't see any drips coming from anything, you might have a leak in one of your pipes and you need to start opening cabinets, tracking all these down, tracing them anywhere they go. And you want to make sure that your uh, low point drains are closed because that could make it cycle too. And then you want to just track down wherever you have a water leak and repair the pipes as necessary. But since we didn't hear anything, we are good to go. And now we can drain our water out of the RV and winterize, which I will be doing a video on right after this one. Okay, so over there we do have our gray water tank for our showers and sinks. Then right here we're going to have our big black tank. Now what you're going to need to do in case those are, say, frozen solid or you have a little bit of ice in them, they will not drain uh, because you forgot to empty them before a freeze. What we're going to need to do is warm them up. So once you located your tanks, what I would do, I don't have to do this because mine were empty, so they weren't frozen, okay? So I'm not going to set all this up to show you, but I will tell you what I would do. Now, around these tanks right here against the RV, I would take a plastic sheeting. So just go to the hardware store, get some plastic sheeting and some really nice big wide painter's tape. And you're going to attach it all the way around to the, to the other side of the tanks, probably just to the whole side of the RV so that it hangs down with that tape. And uh, basically you're going to make a little room of plastic down here that encompasses all those tanks. So down underneath, you can see that long uh, pipe right there. That's where my, my black tank hose is stored. I would attach to that. Try and make it as airtight as you can going up to whatever you can and make a small little box, a little room uh, for the plastic sheeting. And then you're going to take your little space heater and put that in that room. You can weigh down the plastic on the bottom with rocks or boards, two by fours. And that's going to make a nice little windproof room. Now you could do this with blankets or stuff like that, but you really want something that's going to totally block the air from getting through it. So if it's windy or something like that and the wind blows through it, it's not going to heat up very well. So I'd recommend you go with the plastic sheeting. It's pretty cheap and inexpensive. And then you just go all the way around here with the tape, make a little room, put your space heater in there, and then let that run for a day or two until that warms up the tanks. Another way that you could go would be to attach uh, heating pads. And uh, that would even prevent future freezing uh, if you ever had a problem, you could just turn those on and it would keep them from freezing if you're going to be camping in really cold areas. Or if you run into this problem and you get some ice in there, you could just turn on those tank heaters and it would warm everything up. They run off 12 volt power and some even run off uh, 110 AC. But you could put that on the bottom of each tank. It's a little pad with adhesive and then you plug that in. That's going to warm up and take care of your problem. And uh, But the space heater is what you're going to do if you just need to get, it's an emergency situation, you need to get it unthawed or you need to get it thawed and then uh, drain the tanks so you can uh, winterize. So that's what I would do. Okay, so there you have it. I was able to escape without any damage to my pipes or water pump. I hope it is the same for you. If they're frozen solid for a long period of time, you might have some cracks and damage that you're going to have to deal with. But I certainly hope not. I hope you understood the part uh, about defrosting the holding tanks. I didn't have to do that because mine were empty. But I hope that gives you a good idea of uh, some good ideas that really help you defrost those if you do have frozen holding tanks uh, with the plastic sheeting and, you know, making a room and then putting your space heater in there. Uh, if you have any questions about anything in this video, please put them in the comments below and I will try and help you guys out and answer those. If this video helped you out, please like, share, and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And I will be making videos on winterizing and also how to add a water heater bypass valve to make winterizing easier in the future very soon. I'll either put a link up below or after this video when those are done. In the meantime, just subscribe and they should come to you in a notification. My name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And until the next one, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.